Although we now live in a world of instant communication, one area that remains relatively slow moving is shipping, but it is nonetheless crucial to our everyday lives. Most of the products in our houses, most of our food, and most of our clothes have been on a ship and through a port. And it's not just everyday goods that pass through ports, which is what makes ports and shipping so attractive to organized crime groups. Sometimes we get reports from individual countries, so the Canadian Hells Angels and other motorcycle gangs have got some sort of input in the major container ports. Um, I think that there are also stories of mafia influence at certain ports around the Mediterranean. Um, known cases of entire containers being stolen, um, possibly with the collusion of port workers. Captain Rick Verhergen is the manager of port security at the Belgian port of Antwerp. Well, my specific team is mainly concerned with uh, terrorism. Um, obviously, we, we all are aware that some uh, terrorist organizations also use crime to finance the terrorist organization. So, the other, the, the, it is also a concern of us what is going on with crime. If you're looking for the front line in the battle with organised crime, then this is a good place to come. This is the port of Antwerp, the railway leading into it. And the port of Antwerp is the second biggest in Europe. 90% of the world's trade is carried by sea and organised crime syndicates need to trade their goods and so target ports. But the port of Antwerp is already on the case, as well as having sophisticated technology looking for drugs and other items. It also has these scanners behind me, which are there to ensure that any radioactive material coming in or out of the port is immediately detected. It's a matter of putting a higher threshold. Let's say doing your illegitimate business gets a lot more difficult with a proper security system in place because you have a lot more hurdles. There have been quite a few serious catches lately. And that has also, I think the, there's another, another added value, that's the fact that the uh, judicial police and, and the uh, customs work more and more closely together. And behind me is one of the main weapons in this war against organized crime, using ports for their trade. It's a container scanner. It takes X-ray images of what's in containers and compares that image with what's supposed to be in the containers. It looks at the density, so it doesn't matter how well packed the goods are. If they're not what they're supposed to be, this machine will be able to tell. And it's already produced some major busts. Look closely at the highlighted box in this X-ray photograph and you'll see well-hidden bags of drugs. And in this X-ray, the scanner has detected that only the back of the container has legitimate cargo. The rest is contraband cigarettes. The next stage is to introduce a container scanner which can tell the difference between organic products and other products. In other words, if somebody is saying that they are transporting flour, when in reality they're transporting cocaine, the new scanner will be able to tell the difference. But it's not all about new technology. One of the best ways to disrupt organised crime operations is joined up intelligence. Obviously, it's an added value for us too if this port is, let's say, safe, secure. When you do not have coordination, that's to the advantage of, of uh, the crime. Uh, if you do have coordination, if you can put all your data together, if somebody can have all this data in a house and say, oh, oh, here's something, then you're on the good track. Though organised crime in ports is probably bigger business, it's piracy at sea which has grabbed more headlines recently. We've got a Somali model in which low value or slow moving ships get hijacked and put up for ransom. Then you've got the more organised crime in the Far East, which um, there is some evidence that the triads have been involved in in the past, where the attractions lie in higher value ships and higher value cargoes. And despite the headlines, piracy may be an even bigger problem than we realise. Piracy is underreported by an unknown factor. Um, in many countries, people simply don't bother to report piracy because what's the point? It will simply delay your vessel for another few days. There's no confidence in local police to actually be able to do anything effective about it. Piracy attacks off the coast of Somalia rocketed from just two in 2004 to over 60 in 2008. Could these attacks be linked to Islamist terror groups in the country? 
The most active um, Islamist militia in Somalia is a group called Al-Shabaab. Some experts have suggested that they might be in some way benefiting from this, um, but I don't think personally the evidence is conclusive. There's evidence the other way as well, that um, Islamists do not approve of pirate activity. This is now probably the second or third largest foreign currency earner in Somalia, uh, ransom money from piracy. So clearly group, groups like Al-Shabaab in the south and others will want to be looking at this and saying, is there a way we can make money from this? But I think it's likely that the vast, vast majority of piracy, and if not all piracy, will remain as profit-driven uh, criminal enterprise rather than with political or religious motives. Even without evidence of direct links, Somalia's failed state status has already proved a major security threat. If we go back to the bombings of the U.S. embassies in Kenya and in Tanzania, there is some evidence that bases in Somalia were used uh, for preparing those bombings. In Somalia, where, for example, you have piracy coexisting along with groups such as the Shabab, and even though there's very little evidence that the two groups uh, cooperate on an, opera on an operational basis, they certainly benefit from each other's presence in the sense of destabilizing the country and allowing piracy to operate almost unhindered. But there may be an upside. Ironically, Somalia may be one of the countries which is so much of a failed state that it's too chaotic even for the major organized crime and terror groups to operate in. There is rather a compelling argument which suggests that Somalia is actually too much of a failed state for Al-Qaeda to operate successfully in. In other words, they require at least a minimal degree of infrastructure um, and contact and networks with the outside world. And without a solution on land, there can be no solution to the piracy at sea. Everyone I've spoken to, but be they from the security sphere or from the shipping industry sphere, says that the problem is getting a solution on land to uh, the Somali issue. The Straits off of Somalia are too important to ignore. They carry trade to and from the key economies of Europe, China and India. Major international counter-piracy operations have been launched, but they can only go so far. The problem is, and as it was put to me by a senior admiral once, you'd need at least 300 vessels in the Gulf of Aden to guarantee that there wouldn't be any piracy attacks. And you'd need you know, probably twice that to protect the Indian Ocean. There aren't six or nine hundred vessels, uh, naval vessels spare in the world. Navies from different countries, different backgrounds, NATO, the EU, China, Russia, are able to work together um, in an unprecedented way in uh, naval history. That, that actually looks quite encouraging to me. There can be an effective deterrent, what there can never be is um, a foolproof deterrent.